and what we believe uh, the four nines will deliver is obviously less impurities, better performance, um, and and what we've been able to establish through achieving that, we've actually been able to lower the the capital and and operating cost as well. And you know we'll be providing updates on that in the future. Talking graphite here with EcoGraph and Andrew, 127% increase in the graphite resource, Ipango project, you brought a great video along. Yes, thank you Arnie, nice to be back. And uh, certainly uh, great to showcase the size and scale of the Ipanko deposit. We've released the uh, recent flyover and Apanko is now the largest development ready graphite resource and it's a, it's a massive body of graphite mineralization yeah and i mean fantastic pictures we can't wait to also go to tanzania and uh, andrew uh, i think i can already share that we are planning a trip so we're gonna be on site absolutely excited and there was some great news also the recent announcement on the mineral security partnership by the u.s state department featuring ecograph that that's correct uh, the press release was a result of a meeting in Toronto uh, at, during the PDAC. And to have a Panko, uh, the development mentioned, uh, as well as our purification capability, is really complementary to, to our company uh, and also very supportive of Tanzania. To have that uh, really support is, is overwhelming. And, and I guess the recent resource that we've uh, shown and the, the viewers are seeing the fly through uh, it is quite significant, particularly the expansion capability in the future. Mount Graffit, that we've just completed some trenching and you're uh, seeing some of the, the results. This is some of the highest grades. Uh, Mount Graffit is um, at 1,400 metres elevation. That is 500 metres from where, 500 metres higher than the plant site. And I know from my uh, engineering days that uh, the mining engineers love taking material downhill. They don't like going uphill. So uh, there's a really long-term uh, optionality over the expansion at, at Panko, and which will provide a very long-term, low-cost material for the battery anode market and andrew perhaps we can also talk about some of the specs of the resource that you have because of course you have released this this fly through so we have some nice b-roll there uh, what is the strike length what is the purity how many tons per annum can this uh, this ore body support as is and what are the expiration upsides in the future yeah that's um all good questions we've sh shown that uh, the deposit is uh, over 200 meters wide and it occurs now uh, we've delineated it over uh, five and a half kilometres. And that's important because that now encapsulate the whole strike length within the S, uh, the special mining licence that we're expecting to be granted by the government. That's uh, with the government and we're expecting the granting of that uh, uh, relatively uh, soon. And, and I guess also the mining parameters, given the low strip ratios, uh, gives us an optionality of how we expand the mine with this larger resource that uh, we've delineated over three and a half kilometres, but it's got a full strike length of five and a half. So there's a lot more work to be done, but we've got sufficient resources uh, in the immediate future to cater uh, in over the next couple of decades easily. And uh, Andrew, with the 127% increase in this graphite resource in the Epango project, how does that compare to your peers um, across the globe to give the audience a bit of a benchmark? I think when you look at not only the size of the deposit, but the uh, carbon grade concentrate, uh, we're going to achieve 97 to 98% carbon grades. The very high recoveries of 94% um, uh, recovery. The very low strip ratio of 0.3 uh, to 1. You know, all these characteristics vector towards you know, one of the lowest cost uh, producers of, of, of graphite. So, you know, the resource uh, compares very favourably. You know, it is the, the largest graphite, uh, undeveloped graphite resource uh, in, in Africa now. And we'll be able to evaluate the expansion with a lot more confidence uh, in the future, how we scale up from the, from the initial 73,000 tonnes to over 300,000 tonnes 
uh, of production. Yeah, and you mentioned cost. That's of course critical for your bottom line. Has a big impact on on your profits. But the grades also has uh, moved from 99.95 to 99.99 percent, which has a big impact on your top line, so your revenue. And that's not linear. So for those not familiar with the graphite market, could you just explain what kind of commercial impact that has moving that grade? Because looking at the numbers, you might think, okay, that's not a big deal, but actually in graphite it is. That's right. So we're taking our natural flake graphite from 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 Tanzania at a, at a mined a flotated grade or process grade of 96 to 98 percent we are going to mechanically shape that in Tanzania that's a value adding activity uh, and then we're going to export that to uh, purification uh, centers we've got custard custard demand for that uh, unpurified spherical graphite as well, but we're looking to purify the material and, and having such a high grade concentrate means there's less efforts from a chemical process to remove the impurities. And the recent result that we announced uh, of achieving four nines, 99.99, um, really is a terrific uh, result, it's outstanding. And, and what we believe uh, the four nines will deliver is obviously less impurities, better performance, um, and and what we've been able to establish through achieving that, we've actually been able to lower the the capital and an operating cost as well. And you know we'll be providing updates on that in the future. So it's really a a, a great result from our battery anode materials team uh, with our Tanzanian team because they go hand in hand. The natural flake graphite is ultimately becomes a, a, a natural uh, battery anode material for the EV and the uh, battery market. And Andrew, let's talk about those operating costs uh, just a bit longer. Uh, the people will see that uh, your ore body is actually a mountain, which has a lot of uh, advantages uh, from an operational cost side. And one is that strip ratio of 0 0.3 to 1. Perhaps you can quickly explain what that number actually means. Yeah, that's right. It all goes to you know accessing the ore, and the cost of getting that to the processing plant. We only have to uh, remove 0.3 waste tonnes to one ore tonne. So that's a relatively little cost uh, versus higher strip ratios uh, that would have to pay more on, on waste movement. Ore movement and waste movement is a relatively high part of the, uh, the mining, obviously the mining cost. But the mineral processing cost uh, also benefits from the geology as well because this is this graphite liberates out of the uh, local host rock very easily and that is demonstrated by the recoveries that we're uh, uh, achieving so cost is really important a base load cost competing with the chinese supply you know cost is still important as we develop these new supply chains and having a very solid base load to for the feedstock is is really important for establishing new supply chains in these emerging markets. Looking at this uh, slide, tailing storage facility, uh, I haven't seen that before in the Ecograph context. So, Andrew, could you share a little bit what is it all about? Um, why is it important for the Ipango project? Yeah, thanks, Arnie. It's something um, that uh, we've been recently uh, working on. The, the tail storage uh, facility is where the residue, once we've extracted the graphite, uh, the residue material is stored. Uh, this is quite important to lenders and customers that we've got a long-term storage and the flyover really gives a very nice perspective of the facility and the benefits we've got. The valley is a huge infrastructure benefit. We've been able to, through Knight Peasold, um, outline that we can expand this facility um, from the initial insert line um, that you see in, in in the slide, from the initial storage facility hosting uh, 8 million tonnes to over 80 million tonnes, which is the larger outlined material. And the benefit of this is there's only one key wall holding this back. The, the remainder of it is uh, the natural topography. Uh, and this is a long-term benefit. We're developing the mine uh, to the global um, industry st uh, standard for tails management. This was updated in 2020 as a result of the Brazilian tails uh, uh, incidents, and it's very important to 
uh, customers and and having a long term solution here at Apanco for not only our initial stage of mining but much broader is really an advantage. And uh, you'll see where we've completed the drilling in the video on the on this key uh, key wall feature. We've had to do a lot of engineering around the um, underlying materials to support the sign off that we're meeting this international standard. So it, it really is uh, something that's critical to the mining operation. Not that well understood, but it's something that the flyover really showcases very well uh, with the topography benefit that we have. Andrew, that sounds like it has a good high ESG score then, which is important for this project um, as Ecograph is aiming towards a high quality project here in Tanzania. Yeah, absolutely, Ani. It's, it's critical to the debt financing we're pursuing with, the, with KFW, IPEX Bank, and we, we're developing this project to the highest possible standards, World Bank equator principle standards. So Andrew, exciting times. We've got the letter of intent signed with BASF, the large chemical group out of Germany. We've got a 127% increase in the graphite resource in the Epango project. You've moved uh, the graphite grade from 99.95 to 99.99%. And you got mentioned in the mineral security partnership from the US State Department. What's ahead now for 2024? What are the next steps? Yeah, look, that's a uh, great. It's been a couple of uh, really significant months, but the future's looking even more exciting. The team, uh, the Tanzanian team's incredibly busy on the financing. Our battery anode materials team is focused on the product qualification uh, facility, bringing that into fully uh, uh, operational, and that will drive a lot of news flow in the future. And the anode recycling, we're seeing increased interest on recycling and working with BASF it is really complement to the efforts and the advantages our purification technology brings. So we've got quite a lot of news flow and the next few months is going to be just as exciting as where we've been and what we've achieved to date.